Today we're going to be talking about a very important issue that a lot of women struggle with these days and that's the fact that they are not able to secure something more than a single date or maybe only two or three dates but it never really moves to the relationship stage and what happens then is that they are either dumped or completely ghosted and ignored and what the hell happened during the first date when he decided that he doesn't actually want to even give it a second try or third and so on. If something like this happens after the first date, first thing that you have to remember is that perhaps that person wasn't right for you or you were not right for them. Even if you like them and they don't like you, there's no point in continuing. So instead of filling your mind with negativity, you should focus on the fact that they wasn't the right person. However, that does not mean that you didn't do anything wrong. There is still possibility that date actually could have developed into something deeper, something that would have continued for second, third, and maybe even a permanent relationship if you didn't commit some of the most common mistakes. And this is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, from where I sit, dating has changed a little bit since I used to date. Dating apps, in my opinion, should only serve as a as an addition to already healthy dating life. Your primary focus should be on finding somebody in the wild, finding people in real life. Dating apps should not really serve as the only source of your potential dates or uh, potential mates. It should serve as a complement. It should not be your primary focus. So since we're talking about social media and dating apps, it's obvious that social media has really changed how we perceive ourselves, how we perceive other people, and also how we perceive reality. One of the biggest problems with social media and dating apps these days is that women who have always been creatures who indulged in attention and validation, now they can get it very quickly. All a girl has to go on is some dating apps and be flooded with messages from potential dates, from guys who are interested in her, who are actually interested in the idea of her, the perfect poses, the perfect makeup. And this is where the crux of the problem lies. They quite literally misunderstand their own market value. I mean, if you consider the fact that, okay, women have a huge pool of options when it comes to guys. However, women also are very particular when it comes to their choices. And they tend to have long lists of requirements. Six foot tall, earning six figures, being this and that. They tend to have a lot of requirements and every girl has her dream idealized man that she wants to find. The problem is that reality does not always reflect what our dreams conjure up, what, what dreams we conjure up in our minds. The idealized versions of reality, they simply don't exist or are so rare that the probability of you as a woman coming across your ideal guy is pretty minuscule, especially if you yourself are not perfect. And this is where the problem lies. Most of the women think that they are perfect and they think they are perfect purely because if they present the idealized version of themselves on social media, they will quickly find thirsty and horny guys who will be more than happy to flood them with compliments. Not to mention that other women will be more than happy to pitch in, especially if they can unite and stand together behind certain idea, such as men are rubbish. This is another problem, negativity. You might be going to a first date and you think that okay, you want to bring up some topics and you'll start complaining about something or your date starts complaining about something and you'll feel like there's a way in to sort of unite, to unify your, your ideas and thoughts and opinions and to get on the same wavelength. The problem is that once you start filling up the date with negativity, you might be connecting with the other person at that moment, but that may be the wrong moment. The other person could have had a shitty day. That does not mean that their entire life is like that. And once they leave the date, they're going to remember you and associate you with all the negativity that you quite literally united behind during the date. And that is the mark that you're going to leave. And that could be another reason why they will not go for another date, because why would they? Why would they go with somebody who 
presenting themselves as having negative views and being able to only complain about things. And this leads me to another point. You may be trying to present the best side of you during the date, trying to impress. We all do this. But presenting yourself in the best light should not be something that is only uh, reserved for the other person. It's something that you should uh, have as part of your natural behavior. That means that if you're nice to the guy and suddenly you're shouting at the waiter because he missed a couple of anchovies of your, of your salad, then they will think, okay, she's putting on a mask and that rude behavior, that's who she really is. And the guy may actually try and finish the date. At the end of the day, there's still a chance that even if he has already decided that there's not gonna be a second date, you can still smash. So don't try to be rude. Try to appreciate rather than expect. Meaning that if, let's say, a guy offers to pay for the dinner, appreciate it, but don't expect it. You shouldn't be so entitled that you expect him to do anything, to be honest, because you are not perfect yourself. And this is something that we always tend to forget. So again, appreciate, not expect. Now, we've already mentioned social media, dating apps, rude behavior, how we present ourselves, which leads me to another point and that's your presentation online. It's one thing trying to present the exterior in the best light, trying to pull the best angles, use the best light, pose so that you look as attractive as, as you can be. However, and this is something that mostly women do, they go on TikTok, and then they complain. They complain about previous dates, they, they express their hatred for men in general, or they complain about their ex. Doesn't really matter. This is their business card. This is something that they are leaving behind for anybody to see. And let's say you connect with a guy through Instagram or Snapchat or wherever, or you met them in the wild. You exchange contacts. I guarantee you every single guy will look you up. They will look you up on every single social media. Not only will they look you up for the purposes of seeing the best ideal version of you, but they will also look you up to see what you are like when you're away from other guys, when you are failing at dates, when you are being ghosted, when you are successful. Whatever you leave behind, that is your business card. And I guarantee you that if somebody sees you complaining and bitching about your ex or guys in general, or you're talking about how many guys you smashed in last week, or that you've slept around with 50 people, which only tells them that you don't really put any value to sex, there's no emotions, and you're essentially a hooker who's not getting paid, or that you complain that people require you to pay the bill or half the bill or whatever. Whatever attitudes you present online is out there for grabs by anyone. And this is why so many women are getting ghosted either before the date because they found somebody better or they found qualities that you presented online that they just thought, you know, that, that would be a terrible idea to date this girl. Or they see a potential of going for the first date they know that based on what you presented and how many people you sleep around with, they can still smash, they can still get inside your knickers, but that's it. They wouldn't be interested in anything else. I mean, why would they? So be careful what you present online. And if you wanna bitch around, make it private. Keep a tight circle of, of people. Don't just go and present anything just for some immediate validation because it's not worth it. It's completely going to destroy your dating life and it's going to destroy you in the long term because it's like a vicious circle. You go on dates, you think that you will date a numbers game, you will find the right man if you slip around, if you try as many days as possible, then you get ghosted, then you complain, then you panic and you arrange more, you create rosters of men and again the whole circle continues until you end up being all alone. So if sleeping around for instance is something that you want to do or complaining then keep a tight lid on it. Don't make it overly public. 
I mean, it's nice to have, have some kind of secrets. You don't have to just lay it all out and lay out all the negativity and all of the worst sides. This is something that will stay there for a very long time. And even the girls who thought they deleted stuff, I mean, go on YouTube. There's a bunch of Manosphere channels that have grabbed stuff that no longer exist on TikTok, but are on YouTube and probably will stay there forever. All right, let's ease off. Next thing you should avoid doing is complaining about your ex. Complaining about your ex during the first date, talking about your ex too much, is just a big no-no. It's not something that you want to present. Like I said, we all try to project the best side of ourselves, at least on a first date. I mean, initially you don't really know the person, you don't know whether you should trust them, but the same goes for them. They don't really know whether they should trust you, they may be attracted to you, but this is the stage when they're still learning about you. It's all push-pull and if you start complaining about your ex and talking about all of the exes, what is really the unifying thing in all of those failed relationships? That's you. And that's all the guy sees. He sees you complaining about every single guy that you've been with and he's already imagining that he is next. That is going to be him. Because all he sees that all the other guys either left you ghosted or were supposedly crazy, but you are the unifying thing in all of those failed uh, all of those failed dates or relationships and that's not something that anybody would want to go into and if they do or they appear that they do then it's once again just for the reason of sex they want to smash and move on excessive makeup excessive makeup just screams two things that you're trying to hide something try to hide imperfections they will just freak him out the next morning when you walk up next to him or lack of confidence I mean, you could have confidence and put very light makeup or no makeup and still be able to pull it off, still be able to charm the man. I mean, every man going for a date is pretty much primed to like you. Well, there's one caveat. If he arranged the date because you have some perfection on Instagram, you know, you are literally a perfection of yourself on Instagram, presented with the best makeup, best light, best angles. And then when he sees you in person and you don't resemble the image that he's imprinted in his mind, then obviously you failed in the first five minutes of the date and you completely disappointed him. And there have been cases of guys who finished the date before it even started. If you tone it down on social media and you present the self image that is closer to reality, you can easily pull off and charm a guy just with your personality just with your femininity. That does not mean makeup or heavy makeup. Just use light makeup, don't go overboard. Now moving on to the next part would be the interview. Stop interviewing your dates. It's not an interview, it's not an interrogation, you're not ticking off qualities of the list. You may have some dreamt up or imagined qualities that you're looking for in a guy and have your standard up here when you really are just down here and you're self-deluded. But it's not something that you should do. It's a complete turnoff. Just imagine a guy going on, on a date with you and just questioning you and questioning you and maybe pulling faces at some things and then pulling our phone, answering some other messages and DMs and maybe organizing other dates because you're disappointing him during this interview. It's not something anybody would enjoy. So stop interviewing your dates. And like I mentioned, stop using the phone. As soon as you go on a date, put that phone away. Show the respect. Show that you respect his time, you respect his attention, and that's the same that you require from him. The opposite of interviewing somebody and being too demanding and self-entitled is just trying to impress too much, trying to work too hard, because that screams that you don't really have the confidence. If you're always the, the girl who is being you know super positive and complimentary about everybody else and while putting yourself down then not only you're showing the lack of confidence and that he can't really trust you because how could he really rely on somebody in the future who doesn't trust themselves 
who doesn't really have confidence in their qualities and in the beauty of their own person why why would they want to be interested in that kind of person a lot of people on tiktok you'll you'll see them these days advising that if you go on a date and you're trying to secure second or third date or trying to secure a relationship that you should mirror your date because trying to mirror somebody too much or overcompensate it is just showing that you don't really trust your own qualities and it's a trap it's trapping you in this subdued position when you're not really trusting yourself you're too eager either the guy is somebody you're really attracted to and you're trying too hard and then if he's pulling away you're trying even harder and then it's coming across as you being needy on top of you not having too much confidence it's just not a very good way to go sharing is good sharing in a relationship is amazing every relationship depends on sharing and depends on having compromises but this is not what we're talking about we're not talking about actual relationships we're talking about dating and specifically the first date second third maybe sharing something interesting about yourself is always a good thing but sharing too much could be off-putting unless you're with the right person and the idea or the possibility of you being with the right person if you selected your date on tinder is very low all you have is their pictures that attracted you which may not even be what they look like some stats some physical stats and maybe some basic information but that's all so what are the chances that the person that you're sharing with some crazy secrets or some crazy side of your personality and when i say crazy i mean quirky i'm not talking about you being a loony bin the possibility that this is the right guy who will appreciate it and who will be on the same wavelength as you in this respect is very low so for this reason try to share share the interesting the positive things the things that are empowering encouraging not just you but others others around you your date sharing something that is more quirky and very specific to you and to your personality and sides of your personality that somebody would perhaps have to <laughs> love you to to accept or get along with that's not something you should share at least not on a first date or a second or a third wait until you're in a relationship leave it up to his discovery let him discover every side every facet of your personality but don't just just lay it out on a table some mystery is always essential now another side of that is preaching or lecturing let's say you're on a date and you start discussing politics or you start discussing religion or anything else don't fall into the trap of lecturing somebody so as soon as you start feeling like you're speaking too much and the other person is not speaking enough or that you're constantly interrupting them or that you are starting to have some heightened emotions or starting to be irritated then i can pretty much guarantee you that you're starting to lecture and you're not very accepting you're not very positive towards the other person you're not very encouraging you're trying to lecture and preach trying to push forward your opinions and your ideas or you're being too defensive about certain things or offensive it doesn't really matter but this is something that you have to watch out for and you really have to avoid doing on a first date another thing that this kind of leads me to is critical so not negative not positive but too critical either self-critical or critical towards others you know there there's a trap that a lot of girls get into and that if there's a guy that they really like and they want to impress him they uh, get into this mode of pick me girl you know they are trying to always describe qualities of other people in a way that would make them shine and that would make them look amazing and those pick me girls that's just not very attractive and it's something that a lot of guys actually see through very quickly and the problem is that they might not actually tell you that they see that but in their minds they're already thinking that okay this girl is gonna be good she's gonna be a good check 
<laughs> good check for a few dates. Uh, okay, I'll cut my losses on paying for a few dates, few dinners, and I'll pull it as long as I can while still having, you know, organizing my other dates, maybe. And this is going to be a non-commitment sort of relationship or situationship as people refer to these days. But really it's, it's going to be just something casual. And once the girl, once you ask for something more, they dash. They had their fun, but they're not interested in anything more. The same goes for being too independent. Being independent is great. But if a girl is being too independent, the way that most women that lack confidence are these days, and you find them, easily find them on TikTok, claiming uh, that they are boss bitch and they can do everything without a man and they don't need any man, but they want a man. All of those women suffer from low self-confidence and self-esteem. All of the stronger women, all of the confident women will be the feminine ones. They know that they can do everything themselves. And we actually have a video about that up here, but they know that it's a lot more fun if they are being courted, if they play their part in this game that we call dating. You may be able to provide for yourself, earn your money, even entertain yourselves and even have fun sexually. But it's a lot more fun if you do it as a couple, isn't it? So I'm going to leave it right here, guys. If there's anything more that you would like us to discuss in future video on this topic, let us know in the comments. Comment with any other mistakes that you have noticed that women do. If you're a woman and the mistakes that you have noticed about yourselves or that you have learned and learned to avoid, share them down below so that everybody can read them and everybody can learn from your own mistakes. You know, just spread, spread the goodwill, spread the word. In the meantime, subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.